Making corrections on a circle become easier when we know where we're going on our circle. Now that we have our point system in play, we now are responsible for making sure that we hit that point. I often see riders go out when they start mapping a circle and making a plan and I hear them say, oh, I'm not in the right spot. So number one, that's very important to me that riders recognize that they aren't in the correct spot. Before, without a plan, they didn't know they were in the wrong spot for success in a circle. So now we know we're not gonna hit the spot how do we make those corrections to get to where we need to be? So it's really important we think about our legs and having our horse in between our legs. So we wanna ride with our toes just pointed out just a little bit. That's gonna put that sweet spot on our leg, on our horse's barrel, so we can feel our barrel. I want you to think about the railroad track. So the, the circle has a perfect set of railroad tracks that go around the geometry. The points are right in the center of the railroad track. So I want to make sure that that horse stays between my railroad track and hits my point. So if I feel him start to deviate and push on my legs in either way, I'm gonna get him off my legs and correct him and that will help hit my point, therefore ensuring correct geometry. If we don't make the correction and if we don't hit our point, what happens is we don't have a circle. So it's really important that we identify where we're going and that we're not going to hit it and then we make the appropriate corrections. So there's two things we talk about with horses. It's pressure and contact. So when I'm in a circle and everything is going just fine, both my legs are in a contact conversation with his rib cage. That's how he knows everything is going according to plan. Now, if I take one leg and I start to have a pressure conversation, so say he's in a right circle and he's starting to lean on my right leg, I'm gonna take my right leg and put pressure on his rib cage. And when he feels pressure, he should be changing something. So he should respond to that right leg and get off of it. So come closer to my left leg and get back in the center of my legs, the center of my railroad tracks. And then once he moves his body, I need to take this right leg out of pressure and back into contact. That's how I tell him, good job, you made the correction and we're back on track. Rider's legs are often too busy or they're not on that horse's rib cage. That's what's steering my horse and that's how I feel my horse as to where their ribs going and if I'm going in the correct manner to hit my point. If my legs are always changing, pressure, contact, nothing, nothing, pressure, contact, that horse doesn't get a formula. So the formula for when everything is going correctly is both legs are in contact. If I need him to change something, I'm going to come in with a pressure conversation. But keeping in mind, if he makes that correction, I need to go back to contact. And that tells him, I did it, that's the answer, continue on. So we'll head out on our circle and we'll put this into action. So we're going back to my number one important thing is where am I going? Okay, so I'm back at my points. Point one, point two, three, four, and back through one. So now what happens is I need to make corrections if I'm not going to hit my point. What happens is, is we go, okay, my point's over there, I'm not gonna hit it, and we carry on. But that's not building good practice, and that's not building a formula, because we're not being respectful of the point that we've set and ensuring that we get to it. Two types of corrections we're gonna make. Number one is halt and side pass to get back on your track if your horse is laying on your inside leg or pushing on your outside leg. Number two is fixing while we're moving forward. When we first start, I like riders to halt and make a correction because that shows me they identify the spot they need to fix. And it also reinforces to the horse that they're not listening to a cue, to a leg, to a correction. The more diligent we are with making corrections, 
the quicker our training progresses because the horse understands they can't lay on the inside leg or push on the outside leg, whatever that correction is. So let's put it into forward motion. Okay, so when we're making a correction through the halt, I know I'm not on my track. You can see he's to the inside of my track because we've got a nice path for a circle worn. I halt, put pressure on with my right leg. I want him to move straight sideways because that relays the message to him that he needs to listen to this right leg. Or flip side of the coin is I find sometimes riders will ride through here and they don't use their inside leg. So we're either reinforcing to the horse, get off of my right leg, or to the rider, use your right leg. So I continue on on my path. I'll make that correction one more time. I'll correct the outside leg through the halt. Okay, so he's pushing on my inside leg. My point's right here, halt, inside leg, and forward. Once I get back on that geometry. So it's easier for him to listen to my leg the first time than halt and leg yield off of it. Okay, so I'm gonna stick with that correction and I'm gonna correct moving forward. So he's on the inside of my track. I know I need to be out. I'm gonna keep forward motion, put my inside leg on and push my geometry back onto my track. Okay. Do that again. He's starting to push on my inside leg. Pressure on my right leg. You'll notice my hands don't move. They don't do too much. I'm filling the outside rein as I move him back on my geometry. So those are the two corrections. Halt, leg yield back onto my geometry, or leg yield and just keep forward motion back onto my geometry. The other correction is if they push on the outside leg. So he's bubbling out. Leaving, halt. Left leg, bring him back onto my geometry. And forward. So I'm reinforcing to him. He did not listen to my outside leg. And he needs to always be listening at all times. I'll do that one more time and then I'll fix moving forward. And I do a lot of this at walk to start for sure. Okay, he's too far to the outside, halt. And forward. Okay, so what that looks like going forward, push him to the outside of my circle a little bit. Okay, so I know my circle's too big. I'm gonna put on my outside leg and pressure. Keep him walking forward. When I return to that path, outside leg returns to contact. Remember, contact with both legs tells him he's on my track, he's in between my legs. There is no time where he gets to push on any part of my legs. Okay, so once more. I'm gonna push him to the outside of the circle so you can see my path I wanna be on. Outside leg, pressure. Return to my geometry, outside leg back to contact. Continue on. Still paying attention to his flexion as well as I'm doing these circles. Okay, Haley. It's actually an excellent visual because you have a path. So you really know when she's deviating from that path. Pick up your inside hand just a little, right there. Okay, let's narrow up your inside hand just a little. Narrow, little narrower pizza crust, good. I can see you making little corrections, outside leg. Awesome. So halt.
Excellent correction. That was perfect. So make sure that you have that nice blue jean contact with both legs on her rib cage and you're feeling her rib cage and you are really reading where that body's gonna go on your circle. That's right. Try and keep her straight. So her shoulders went first. So you can move your outside leg back a little bit further maybe and almost think, keep her nice and straight when you come across her. I'd say she's still bowing on your outside leg. Halt. Don't counter flex her. There, much better. And forward. Good job. Now let's start fixing going forward. You're just gonna take that outside leg, bring her back, good. So try and show me two corrections, one in, one out. So you're using your inside leg and pushing her out. Excellent. Make sure you have that outside leg on. Good. Because that outside leg is kind of like the catcher's mitt. When you send her to the outside, you want to catch her. Now your outside leg, she speeds up. That's okay. A little bit of rain aid. Good. Okay, let's try. Let's do again, same thing. Let's do one where you halt. When you feel her bow, let's halt and fix. And then we'll do a, we'll do a couple corrections. Halt, couple corrections forward. Good, halt. Nice and straight. Move that leg back. Good reinforcement. Good reinforcement, good correction. Now let's move on to correcting moving forward now. Nice quiet corrections. Outside leg, outside leg. She's pretty consistent bowing on that same spot, right? So this time be ready for it. Last circle, okay? Then you're gonna go out into your three circles. You're in your straight line, eyes on your straight line. Hands forward a bit. Try and use that energy forward. Okay, I'm gonna count your points out. One, where's reflection? Two, outside leg. So start earlier with your correction here. Outside leg, eye on your point, outside leg, outside leg, outside leg. Okay, one more. Let's try and get it without adding energy to it. Pick up your inside hand a little. Good job, okay, last circle. Point number one, eyes up on your next entry point. Right flexion, point one, point two, point three, point four, and back through point one, nice and straight through that exit. Good job. What are some things that you felt out there? I'd like to debrief and, and talk about that information and your thought process as you were out there riding through your circles. Number one would be tempo. So when you're asking for that correction, the horse will, when you're leg yielding, it can slow down or speed up with that added leg on there. So that was number one. Two, also kind of the same category. When you do put that outside leg on or vice versa, which way the horse is going off the train tracks, you need to also think about your, your head, where your horse's head is located. There's a lot of things that go on when they're, you're trying to make corrections. So let's talk about tempo first, and then we'll come back to when we add a leg, what happens. 
With a horse like her, she's very forward. When you add a leg, most of the time you don't get the body to move laterally, you get a little burst of speed. So that's something she will progress through in her training where she'll learn leg doesn't mean speed, it means you know mold her body and, and give her body properly. So I would suggest when you go through there, add a little bit more rein aid, so a little bit more half halt before you put that leg on because that tells her to not put the energy forward, to put the energy into those openings that you're creating back here. Second one, you were talking about when you add a leg, there's lots of things that kind of happen to their body. So it's hard to maintain straightness and make that correction, whether you're halting or moving forward. So it's really important that we maintain that dance frame and our, our hands are nice and steady, which you did a really good job of. Anytime we add leg and we add pressure, what's going to happen is it's going to come out somewhere until that horse's training progresses to where that correction stays steady. So again, it, it goes back to steady in our frame. When I add a leg, it usually comes out in the face, whether or not they want to get strong or they want to counter bend. There's a lot of things that they can um, throw at us to try and get out of actually moving off our leg. And that's what people struggle with is they put a leg on and the horse throws something else out there. So there's about four balls in the air you're trying to juggle as you're going around there. Stay consistent with that frame and that formula. You had one correction where it was kind of crooked and we slowed it down and you broke it down and the next one you made was perfect. So if you hadn't slowed it down and broke it down, the next one probably wouldn't have been so successful. So it's really important to kind of go through that step by step where you slow down, show them what the correction is, and then as we add forward motion, it already makes sense to them what that correction is.